This week on Maker Update, an off-grid Pi recovery kit, Hackaday Grand Prize, a chorus of Billy Bass, improving old toys, a transforming bike, viewing G-code, painting R2, and hydro dipping. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. I have been keeping busy with Make Vember projects every day, just little things here and there. And I also started on a new cocktail robot, which is something I am sure I will be chipping away at for a long time now. I'll have more details on that soon. For now, let's get started with the project of the week. On his site, back7.co, Jay Dosher details the construction of this off-grid cyber deck. It's a portable Raspberry Pi based all-in-one computer system built into a waterproof Pelican case. He's also crammed in an ethernet router and a GPIO breakout board wired to these mil-spec connectors. The 3D printed panel also includes switches for each of the components to help manage power and switch between running from the internal battery or an external battery. Also, can we just take a minute to admire the wiring on this? Each bundle is exactly as long as it needs to be, all color-coded with connectors protected in heat shrink. Each bundle is gathered and zip-tied and what could easily be a rat's nest of wiring no one would ever see is executed here with an impressive level of consideration. Go check it out. Now for some news. This year's Hackaday Challenge Grand Prize winner was announced last weekend. The winning project is FieldKit, an open source modular sensor system for conducting research in harsh environments. The team takes home $125,000 in prize money and a supply frame design lab residency. Also announced were five other best of category winners and five honorable mentions, all worth checking out. For something a little silly, but honestly pretty impressive, I saw a news story this weekend about a Chicago bar that installed and networked 75 big mouth Billy Bass fish into their stairwell. With engineering help from New York's Studio Quasi, the toy fish are orchestrated to perform one of three songs, either Stayin' Alive by the Bee Gees, Once in a Lifetime by the Talking Heads, or Choices by E-40. As someone who's no stranger to Billy Bass hacking, I have to tip my hat to this project. This is the kind of crazy I hope to reach someday. Time now for more projects. On Instructables, Lone Soul Surfer has a guide on taking old toys and upgrading them with lights and sound effects. He's using dirt cheap parts, 555 timer chips, flashing LEDs, and basic electronic components. The end result will probably drive parents crazy, but make a fun gift for kids. With the holidays coming up, it could be a great excuse to create a one-of-a-kind toy for a kid in your life. Speaking of one-of-a-kind, check out this transforming chopper bike by Rachel009. The guide on Instructables is from 2015, but it resurfaced on Hackaday this week, and I'd never seen it before. Rachel shows how to extend a bike and add in gas shocks, allowing it to transform from a tall bike down to a low rider. Engaging the shocks is done just by shifting your weight back to lower them, and then standing up to raise it back. I don't think I'm cool enough to pull off a bike like this, but I might need to make one just to find out. Now for a few tips and tools. Last week I had a G-code file on my 3D printer that I couldn't remember what it was just from looking at the file name. I'm sure there are lots of solutions to this problem, but my instinct was to turn to the internet where I found gcode.ws. It's a free G-code file analyzer. You drag and drop a file and I'll show you what it looks like in 2D and 3D. It also shows you some stats on layer info and retraction speeds and locations that could help you troubleshoot some printing quality. On YouTube, Bob Claggett published the third part of his R2-D2 build. It's great to watch an R2 come together, but there's also a great tip in here on using a two-part spray clear coat to create a super hard protective finish on painted parts. Bob uses the spray max coat on the aluminum R2 parts he paints blue to prevent them from chipping. The one drawback to be aware of is that once you mix the two-part formula, you have a limited window of time to use the spray before it all hardens up. So for Bob, he had to get all of his blue parts painted, masked, and laid out before applying the coat all in one shot. Because at $24 a can, you're not buying another one just for touch-ups and a little piece that you forgot to paint. Also on YouTube, The Craftsman has a new video up on hydro dipping with oil-based spray paint. It's a cool technique to know about, but I have to admit, I can't get enough of the way he narrates his videos. And that's what we call the old fashioned little T handle right there. T for Texas. If you're going to play in Texas, 
then you got to have a fiddle in the band. All right. And then the last issue of Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales, he's got some great tips on charging up SLA batteries, learning to approximate measurements with your hands, and using paint primer as a low tack glue for holding down small things on a paint stick that you can move around for a careful paint job. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this new video on how to get your project to send data over Bluetooth using DKIoT Studio. This is DigiKey's online platform for coding and editing your IoT projects. In this case, they're using the Adafruit Huzzah 32 board, which can make use of Bluetooth low energy signals. BLE is a convenient way to receive data from local sensors, as well as send data up and down from nearby computers or phones. If you're curious, go check it out. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email newsletter to get show notes emailed out to you automatically each week. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this awesome show possible. Uh, if you're around the Rochester area this weekend, the Rochester Maker Fair will be taking place. And uh, next week, I'll be taking the week off because of Thanksgiving. So everyone enjoy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.